Hello children today we are going to read a very nice and a beautiful poem The Solitary Reaper written by William Wordsworth First of all let me introduce you to the poet William Wordsworth is one of the most important English poets and the founder of the romantic movement of English literature a style of writing that focuses on emotion and imagination Wordsworth became known as a lake poet because of the era where he lived which is renowned for its beautiful wild landscapes charming pastures and countless lake he was born on 7th april 1770 in kirkmouth united kingdom and he was one of the most often called as a nature poet because of his emphasis on the connection between humans and the natural world he became wildly successful and was named poet laureate of england in 1843 he had his education in hoxted grammar school university of cambridge st john's college cambridge and he died on 23rd april 1850 ride mountain uk he is considered to be the key figure of romanticism as he is the most important author of the most important poems as he is the author of the most famous poems like daffodils loneliness melancholy rebelliousness isolations are expressed through poetic works and no no not only those poems apart from that there are beautiful poems like i wandered lonely as a cloud my heart leaps up ode ode to duties elegiac stanzas composed upon westminster and what not about the poem The poem was written on November 5, 1805 and published in 1807 in two volumes. As each volume is of four stanzas of each eight lines, it is written in iambic tetrameter and four unstressed and four stressed syllables in each line. The rhyme scheme is sometimes A B C D D D E E or A B A B C C D D. Through Wordsworth work nature provides the ultimate good influence on the human mind all manifestations of the natural world from the highest mountain to the simplest flower elicit noble elevated thoughts and the passionate emotions in the people who observe these manifestations and this is also reflected in the same poem the poem is written in the first person account it can be classified as pastoral describing the scene from the country life the poem is dominated by one central figure a highland girl working alone in the fields harvesting grain and singing a melancholy song the poem is not only dominated by a one single figure a highland girl who is working all alone the poet cannot understand her but is mesmerized by the beauty of it all He moves away from the scene but the impact and memory of the scene stay with him. The central idea is how deep melancholy projects feelings of joy and happiness. Let me give you the summary of the poem. The poem begins from the outsider perspective Wordsworth and moves to the insider perspective the girl who is the solitary reaper and then back to the Wordsworth again. So all together in the poem there is a relationship that are established in the poem between the poet and the reader the poet and the girl the reader and the poet the poem is the effort to recreate the whole scene in which the maiden is the central of the natural world and it also expresses it is the description of the blissful mood that the song of the maiden creates in wordsworth at the heart of the poem is the wordsworth definition of poetry as the spontaneous overflow of emotions and emotions that are that the emotions that are recollected in tranquility he emphasizes his poetic values through the poem by creating this beautiful scene in the rustic natural setting and by choosing a simple rustic girl the language of the poem is natural and simple So let me read out the stanzas to you first. Behold her single in the field, yon solitary highland lass, reaping and singing by herself. Stop her, or gently pass. Alone she cuts and binds the grain and sings a melancholy strain. 
Oh, listen, for the wail profound is overflowing with the sound. No nightingale did ever chant more welcome notes to weary brands of travellers in some shady haunt among Arabian sands. A voice so thrilling never was heard in springtime from the cuckoo bird, breaking the silence of the seas among the farthest Hebrides. Will no one tell me what she sings? Perhaps the plaintive numbers flow for old, unhappy, far-off things and battles long ago. Or is it of some more humbly familiar matter of today, some natural sorrow, loss or pain that has been or may be again? Whatever the theme the maiden sang, as if her song could have no ending, I saw her singing at her work and over the sickle bending. I listened, motionless and still, and as I mounted up the hill, the music in my heart I bore, long after it was heard no more. So let me give you the detailed explanation. It is the description of the blissful mood that the song of the maiden creates in the Wordsworth. Now the poet says, Behold her, single in the field, yon solitary highland lass. The beautiful girl is working alone in the cotton fields of Scotland, the highland. Lass here is a maiden, a young girl. Yon is from yonder. It means she is all alone. Reaping and singing by herself. Stop here or gently pass. Reaping is to cut grain from harvest with sith, sickle or reaper. Poi describes her movements and actions. She is reaping and singing at the same time. But she sings for no one in particular. Her movements are fluid, like and gentle. She is oblivious of her surroundings and only engrossed in her work. Her loneliness in is emphasized through repetition of words, also in the title. Poet urges not to disturb her in her work and singing. He suggests that one should either watch her or gently pass from the scene. Alone she cuts and binds the grain and sings a melancholy strain. Grain is the fruit of a cereal grass and melancholy means sand. Oh, listen for the wail profound is overflowing with the sound. So strain here is the tone or the tune. For this, in this stanza, the poet is, tale talks about the sense of loneliness is attached to the whole scene. It gives the impression that the girl is removed from the outer world and there is a sense of joy and respect for the girl and her song as the Wordsworth remark, Oh, listen. No nightingale did ever chant more welcome notes to weary bands of travellers in some shady hut among Arabian sands. Chant is a simple melody or song sung repeatedly. Notes are the musical notes that are sung. Weary bands are tired travellers, and Shady Haunt is like an oasis in the desert, a paradise for the travellers of deserts with date trees, water and birds. The poet is all praises for the tune of the song. The poet is unable to understand the language of the song because the poet says that no nightingale did ever chant in such a beautiful voice. He considered nightingale to be the most beautiful Having a most beautiful voice, the quality of the voice of the reaper is compared to that of the nightingale and which is giving the refreshment to the tired travelers who come far away from the Arabian desert. Wordsworth compared the girl's song and its musical quality with that of the nightingale's song. He feels that the maiden's song even surpasses the song of the nightingale as it heard in the Arabian deserts by the tired travelers. This bird is a famous for her song. Its song is loud and louder when in urban environments in order to overcome the background noise. A voice so thrilling never so heard in springtime from the cuckoo bird, breaking the silence of the seas among the furthest Hebrides. Here thrilling means causing intense excitement and pleasure. Cuckoo bird is a solitary bird that seldom occurs in pairs, generally known as shy bird, more often heard than seen. Cuckoo's call in Europe 
is regarded as the first harbinger of spring. Hebrides are the farthest islands of the mainland Scotland. In these lines, the Wordsworth is comparing the song of the Scottish maiden to the song of the cuckoo bird, breaking the silence of the seas in the Hebrides. The song of the cuckoo bird is associated with the return of life, vitality and spring after the harsh winters. Will no one tell me what she sings? Perhaps the plenty of numbers flow for all unhappy far-off things and battles long ago. Plenty refers to the sad music of the song. Wordsworth here wants to know the content of the song, what she is singing. He may make guesses as he cannot understand the language. She may be singing about old unhappy far-off things or old battles. Her song is not about that, that she is not happy or she is not singing a love song. The music gives Wordsworth the ideas. Or is it some more humbly familiar matter of today? Some natural sorrow, loss or pain that has been or may be again. Humbly is a sad song. Wordsworth wonders again what the song may be about and connects the past, present and future and emphasizes as again or pain or loss because eventually he is feeling that she is singing about something that she is feeling sad. She is singing sor she is singing a song that is relevant to sorrow, loss or pain. Whatever the theme the maiden sang, as if her song could have no ending. I saw her singing at her work and over the sickle bending. Sickle is the instrument to cut grass, a curved blade. Wordsworth emphasizes the beauty of the song and its power to lure. The song appears not to have an ending. I listened motionless and still and as I mounted up the hill, the music in my heart I bore long after it was heard no more. Wordsworth described two effects of the song on him. He stood motionless and still, entranced by the beauty of it. He moved away but carried it in his heart. So he concludes that if he cannot derive the meaning of the song, but he can continue keep that in his heart. He is not he is not interrupted by any other things happening around, but he is carrying that music in his heart. That's why he stood motionless and still. So the themes is simply talking about the recollection and the role of memory in creation of art. The speaker asked the readers to listen carefully to the Scottish girl who is singing by herself and reaping alone in the field. The speaker becomes enamored with both the girl's voice and the meaning of the song. He insists she sounds better than the birds of the springs. So there is a close association with nature. Nature as a source of serenity and peace. As there is a simplicity and the purity of the rustic life that is not burdened with the miseries of urban industry life. So there is a recollection and the role of memory in creation of art. Both have a pleasant effect on the poet. So there are certain poetic devices that are used in this poem. The poem is broken into four line, four eight line stanzas, 32 lines total. Most of the poem is in iambic tetrameter. There is a two rhyme schemes here, A, B, C, D, 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 E, A, B, A, B, C, C, D, D. There is meter, there is imagery, we have hyperbole, breaking the silence of the seas, alliteration, repetition of the alphabets, more welcome notes to the very bands. Analysis. The language of the poem is simple and close to the language of common people. The setting of the poem is rustic and emphasis is on the girl's isolation from the world. Thank you.